Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase. Bit of an unboxing, not a big uh, dramatic unboxing because there's only four pieces in here and it is Team Transport. And while I can say this is Mix A and maybe I will in the title of the video, this is far more significant because this seems to be a vintage racing mix. It's really cool. It's in stores. I've actually seen remnants of it at Walmart. So some of you may have this, but uh, I do think this will be a fun video because we'll do some compare and contrast, especially with one set and you probably know which one it is if you're into this, but really cool to see Hot Wheels leaning into vintage racing. So here's the unboxing portion of it. Me just kind of pulling out what seems to be, well, there we go. Ah, they're still stuck in here. There we go. One of them got kind of jammed in there. Box goes over here. Four sets in here, two matching, so we'll, uh, well, anyway, it just seems, I'll move this down here, that, I don't know, there almost seems a theme here that might be just by chance because I don't think there's not, you know, there's nothing that says it. But a couple of things. Number one, this is the first mix of Team Transport, put this down like that, that has the new gold uh, branding on it, you know. This is the first mix of 2024, so it has this new gold branding up top. Um, the other thing is that, well, this is a European car, right? The Fiat. We've got some muscle here and it really is vibing on the original 2010, 2011 vintage racing set, which I think many of us, you know, there's so much of, so many of us that love that. It's a set that I uh, worked to acquire uh, the, to the complete set a while ago. And uh, I occasionally I just revisit it for features and stuff, but we actually have a repeat from the vintage racing set, sort of, sort of. Um, a matching car with a vintage racing set. And then we have two others that would very much fit in there in that set. So let's get right to it. Let's start with the Fiat set. Um, the only reason I'm starting here is because this might be the coolest set of the, of the, uh, of this trio, but I think these have more of the vintage race. Well, this has a total vintage racing vibe. If they brought back vintage racing and incorporated some Euro stuff, the BRE is the only Japanese car they put in vintage racing from 2010, 2011. I think it was 30 cars total. But the BRE in some ways is an American car, right? With Brock Racing Enterprises. But, um, I mean, Datsun wasn't. But here it is. Um, this is the second story, Lori and the Fiat 131A Barth. There is the artwork for those looking for it in store. There is that. There's some raindrops too, so let's just get right to it. Art is fantastic. Looks like a little bit more of a like a desert safari kind of vibe here. We're gonna just open this up. Is the truck new? It might be. I think this is yeah. It might be new. So let's have a look at this. The car. Oh, the car is. Oh, for you for displaying. There's a little piece of plastic here that holds the car, and that's kind of nice. We'll just, um, let's put it on the turntable, once I put it on the turntable, like this. Well, let's first show off that this has a little piece that locks in. That's, that's plastic. So you can slide that up, it looks like. And then it looks like, here, I'm gonna, well, I think I have to probably pull the car out. Don't wanna hurt it. So the display thing can go and I can slide that out this way, all right. Here is the truck. So you can, like, it looks like, kind of pull it down to, I'll figure it out. There we go. So you can snap, pull this up, put it like that, snap it in. There it is. Nice. So yeah, you can put three cars on here, obviously. Um, back is plastic plus a little bit of metal. It's kind of a little bit of everything. The Fiat logo is on the body of the truck. This is nice. Yeah, it has a, has a real Euro vibe on this one. Second story, Lori. I, I do not remember. If, and if I'm just showing something that's already been um, released, I'm guilty of that and probably uh, and I will be many, many times afterwards. But that's a really nice truck. We'll put that right here. I'll move this down a little bit. How about this car? How cool is that? The Abarth looking fantastic. We had a nice version. I didn't bring it out. We had the nice version from last year's was it Modern Classics, I think, was the mix from Car Culture. In this case, now we get a proper racing version of this car. We get the full detailing all around. As much as I like that factory version, the racing version for this car just, I think, takes the cake by about 800 miles. I just like it better. The vintage, And it just has this great vintage racing vibe. Like I said, if they re-release that mix, put in a ton of muscle, put in a ton of Trans Am, but put in some Japanese and put in a ton of Euro. 
um, rally everything. I mean, there's so much they could do with that. And they're bringing back the vintage racing name, but this is the proper vintage racing stuff, the premium stuff, not that middle premium. As much as that cool set, that set is, it's cool, but who cares? Um, this is this is where it's at, I think. This is the next set we'll do. 66 Chevelle and the 72 Chevy Ram truck. The very surprising uh, it might be the car that's on top of it, the Impala from the last set, but this was a massive peg warmer, and it's such a great hauler. But maybe everyone got the hauler they wanted, and then they just moved back. But because um, I just am so fond of this one, obviously we're getting another um, Chevy hauler. We're getting the um, the Dually. I called it a Dually, I know, but the Dually coming up pretty soon. Uh, but here is this one now. So this is the second version of the hauler plus the '66 Chevelle. Artwork is fantastic. You definitely got a NASCAR vibe there, right? And um, this is the casting. I, in fact, we need to give this casting a little bit of attention. I've done it before. Um, let's just open this up first. Because this is a major underrated casting. And it's for newer collectors. It's going to be hard to find some of the older versions of this casting. But it's been in, uh, it was in, not in Team Transport, but one of the diorama sets recently. So that's, you've got that going for you. But let's look at the hauler here. Chevy truck, so nice. It's just a great hauler, super detailed. What does that say? Not shy on the front of the uh, cab. I just think this is such a great hauler. Maybe, um, maybe it just was more the Impala than the hauler because I just think, I mean, it just doesn't get much better than this hauler, I think. And I do wish you could see the Chevy hauler. I just don't know if it's possible. I think there's always gonna be a Chevy on this in the set, but I did a video last year where I put a ton of different cars, including Porsches and other, um, Euro and Japanese cars because I think it's such a great match for that hauler You could just see someone owning that and then they have their project car their project Porsche on top of it Let's talk about this Impala before we get to it. Let me go through it Because this is one from the original vintage racing set and here is the this is the this is the version to have it's uh, it's going to be a bit uh, Costly to get I haven't looked at the uh, market for this one um of late in vintage racing, but um, to get it, you're gonna have to pay for it. I think over at least a hundred bucks, but this was a really, really cool version from uh, the actual vintage racing. Then they did the racing versions. It wasn't vintage racing, but a year or two after, this was in there and another vintage, vintage-esque deco. I have no idea if this is based on a real racing livery, but this one was really nice. Just kind of classic NASCAR look, this casting is just so cool the way it sits so low. I just absolutely love it. Then I think the next version was this finale convention. We're in the we're in the convention time right now. I don't know when I'm posting this video, but I'm going to Atlanta here in a couple days. And uh, this was the finale car. Nice and clean, not really racing livery, but a really, really cl cool, clean version of this casting after we hadn't seen it for a long time. So that was a nice return. That was, what year was that? 2017 LA when this one was released, so it's been quite a few years. No, there was one other one before that, 2013 Boulevard, or 12 Boulevard, in a racing-esque livery as well. I have no idea if this is based on a real one, but it's good looking. Matt White um, with the Moon Eyes disc wheels, which looks really cool, so I totally forgot about that one. And then lastly, we saw it just recently in the diorama set, was it maybe last year? coming back with that vintage racing vibe, which looks so good in this green color. So uh, I was really, really digging that version. I'm going a little fast because the rain is starting to come a little bit more. And now we have the new version. Hearst on it, South Bay racing fuel with the South Bay reference. I think this might be a uh, fantasy deco, but with the red, white, and blue, the number 66, um, you could see this. So maybe this was designed by Steve Vandervate or someone else for this, uh, for this set, but it does look very much vintage racing, right? Fits in nicely. And, uh, yeah, I'm really digging this one. This casting is so cool, so cool and so worth collecting. And I can put it right here and pivot the camera just a little bit. You can see what's coming up and see that is a nice set of six. I don't think I'm forgetting one. Maybe I am, but I don't think I am. All right. Save the Plymouth set for last. We'll just go ahead and we'll put this one right here. There are two in here. You might see this and go, yeah, just an old race car. You newer collectors, you older collectors, no. Uh, probably not, you're not doing that. But this is superb. Dan Gurney's All-American Racers hauler. Sakura Sprinter is the one they're using. 
and then the 70 Plymouth AA Arcuda. Don't know when the last time was they've used this casting. So happy to see it return and see it return as a companion car to the other Dan Gurney. Well, well, we'll, we'll get to that here in a second. There is the artwork. I believe this Hot Wheels logo, it is the vintage Hot Wheels logo. I believe this Dan Gurney car did have a Hot Wheels logo on it. I believe I'm right there. I can be, I, I'm definitely open to correction because I've been wrong a million times before, but um, this looks so good. Trans Am kind of artwork in the background, which looks cool. Let's open this up. Make sure I don't drop it. Nice little protector piece here. I don't mind if I drop it onto the mat, but definitely not onto the concrete below. Okay, protector piece. Let's look at the truck and close that up. Obviously, it's great to see the Plymouth and the, the orange, yellow, orange, and red deco on this. Dan Gurney's All American Racers. Nice to see all of this. I think Hot Wheels is going back to what to their actual licensing to make this one proper. No idea if the hauler looked like this or some, something similar, but it does fit and it does fit nicely. That's a really, really nice hauler. But let's talk about the car. Here it is. So this would be Dan Gurney's number 42. And I can go back to the original vintage racing. And here is number 48. Looking at the castings. Now there's some changes here. Now I have no idea if the shade of blues were, blues were different in the racing cars, but obviously the vintage racing is a brighter blue. They have the same wheels, obviously different numbers, but you got Dan Gurney's 48 with a pretty similar deco and then Dan Gurney's number 42. This one doesn't get, the new one doesn't get the Goodyear on the tires. Wish it did, that would be awesome. It's such a cool look for these. Um, but then you get uh, on the other side here, some, now you can see some damage. This was a problem with the vintage racing is they would rub against the card. And this might be why we see more of that kind of wrap print, almost like some, some people call it the dot matrix, matrix printing. As great as this looked, it didn't do well on the card. You can see the damage there um, on that side. And there's a few like that. It's just something that uh, we collectors had to deal with with these uh, with these models. But they still look good. And there's almost, you could almost argue that maybe that just looks like a car that's been through the, been on the track a few, uh, a few laps, right? So this one is beautiful, the old vintage racing. And then here is a new one. We'll just give it its own time on the turntable. But it's so nice. We actually are building over, uh, what, 13 or 14 year period, an actual fleet of Dan Gurney's cars. And we have a truck as well. So compare that to like the uh, smoke, um, Snake and Mongoose sets that they've done. Now we have a hauler for those. And uh, you're seeing very slowly but surely Hot Wheels building that vintage racing back up. And that is so cool to see so these euro cars like the fiat moving in let's see some more classic japanese cars hopefully they could do that there's it's complicated with le with uh, licensing i understand it but it is so nice to see hot wheels doing that and gain a new appreciation um, new collector's appreciation for these there you go very very nice set i know there's going to be others that will probably gain a little bit on the in the hype department but this is a fantastic fantastic trio of sets that i really hope you don't sleep on um, because they are fantastic. You guys tell me what you think. I really dig it. Bye.